Okay. Uh, here's the line. Yeah. And here's Ron. It's the Ron Todd Show. Pastoron. It's the Ron Todd Show. All y'all got it. It's the Ron Todd Show. You are now tuned in to the Ron Todd Show. Oh! It's the Ron Todd Show. Go have several seats. It's the Ron Todd Show. Are they saved or no? It's the Ron Todd Show. You are now tuned in to the Ron Todd Show. Oh! It's the Ron Todd Show. You must be a black uh-huh. woman. It's, it's the Ron Todd Show. Sweet right. pumpkin. It's the Ron Todd Show. You are now tuned in to the Ron Todd Show. Oh! Pastor Ron, you paid for my foot and my foot grew. Hey, who brought the food today? Hey, hey, hey! What's up, everybody? And welcome to the Ron Todd Podcast. I am super excited to be here tonight, guys. We have an amazing show for you. It is going to be absolutely incredible. As you guys know, we have Billboard Chart Topping, Ernest Pugh with us tonight, and he is already waiting in the studio. I'm super excited. It's going to be amazing. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I'm super excited about it. All right. I'm all right. Listen, I want to like talk to everybody that's coming in already. I see you guys are already starting to uh, pop in. As you jump in, make sure you guys uh, say hello to me. So let's see who we got so far. Kevin Moore is in the building. What's up, Kevin? Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. He says, it's the Ron Todd show. That's right. Thank you so much for being here. Certainly appreciate you. Kiana Parker says, come on, theme music. Yay. yay." That You know, it's so funny. That theme music is from our radio show from a while back. And uh, I'm just super excited because I still love it. And I still think it sounds pretty relevant. So we're still using it. So good to see you tonight, Kiana. And she says, hi, Ron. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. I'm super excited. All right. Meredith Jackson says, hello. Hello, Meredith. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I appreciate you as well. Come on. As you guys come in, make sure you say hi. And I want to definitely try to uh, speak back to you because that's what we do. Right. Right. (laughs) So as you come in, just say something and I'll definitely uh, give you a little shout out. How about that? But as I was saying, we have an amazing show for you guys tonight. Ernest Pugh is here. Don't worry, guys. He's here. And uh, we're going to have a nice long segment with him. Super excited about that. But let me tell you. So before the uh, before this podcast, I have a Tuesday night Bible study. Right. And when I tell you it was so scary trying to get home, and let me tell you why it was scary. Because how about so I got in my car and I and I my friends tell me all the time, like, make sure that you do not let your gas get down to like 10 miles to empty. I got in my car, I had six miles to empty. Tell me why I realized as I got in the car six miles to empty that I had also left my wallet. So I had no credit cards. I had no cash. I had nothing. So now something that I started a while back that, you know, I still do now is I always, every time I get, like, if I go to a fast food place or wherever, I always take the change and I put it like in the little ashtray part of my car, you know, the little console, whatever you call it, you know, I don't smuggle nothing, you know, I don't do none of that. So, you know, Hey, I got a little place where I can put something at, you know, so I just throw the change in there for a day such as today. So I'm in there and I'm, you know, I'm looking through my change and I realize, oh, I have some quarters. So I'm like, cool. So I got together like four dollars and quarters. So I'm like, OK, this should be enough to get me home. Right. So I I'm sitting in my car and I'm doing one of these like. I'm looking around because I want to make sure that nobody sees me, you know, because I'm like, I'm going to be so embarrassed going in there with four dollars and quarters. Everybody going to be like, I mean, what, you don't have no gas money. So, you know, this is what's going through my head. So I'm like, OK, so I'm looking around trying to make sure don't nobody see me. Right. So then I literally I so I go in the gas station. And so nobody was in there. Thank God. So I'm like, hi, sir. How you doing? I'm like, can I get um four on pump seven? He like, huh? How much? I'm like four dollars on pump seven. So I slide the change under the glass. You know, it's bulletproof glass where I was at. So I slid the change under the glass. I'm like, yes. Can I please get four on pump seven? What are you saying, sir? I'm like, well, he hard of hearing. I said, can I get four on pump seven? Now, by that time, three people had walked in the door. I'm like, oh, like, I don't believe this. Like, oh, oh, you know, so I'm like, okay. So I'm like, let me get four dollars on pump seven, please, sir. 
You know, he's like, oh, okay, so you won $4, one. And he counting the change on the counter. And I'm like, oh, I don't believe this. You know, so everybody looking around like, what's wrong? Like, my man, you need some help. You ain't got no money. So I'm like, yes, $4. Okay, no problem, sir. I put it on pump seven. So I'm like, okay. So, I, you know, it was cool because I'm like, okay, you know, whatever, $4. So I get to the pump and I'm like, oh, Lord. So I'm like, I'm hoping, you know, don't nobody see. Somebody came up. Hey, Pastor Ron, how you doing? I'm like, oh, <laughs> hey, how you doing? I'm like, okay, well, they're going in the gas station. Let me pump this $4 real quick before somebody else come in. You know, like, okay, you know, hey. So tell me why I get to the pump. And so they ran in real quick, came back out. I'm like, oh. And so he says, okay, sir, you can now pump your one, two, three, four dollar on pump one. I'm like, what? I don't believe it. What you? I'm like, man. All he had to do was start the pump. I was so embarrassed. So long story short, I got home. It was cool. Whatever. You know, then I got a call from a relative who was dealing with, you know, a serious issue, actually, which is a domestic violence type issue. Now, I've always been an advocate. You know, when it comes, very disrespectful, Kiana, when it comes to uh, domestic situations and stuff, listen, I, <laughs> yes, Kevin. When it comes to domestic situations, though, listen, I try to be like real, uh, try to stay out of it as much as I can. And people be like, well, why? You know, because that's your family. You know, if they're going through something, shouldn't you be there for them? Yeah. But listen here, my experience, let me tell you about my experience with domestic situations. I, so I remember I had a family member who had called me like, yeah, you know, my boyfriend is going upside my head. And I'm thinking to myself, uh -huh, I told you that's why you ain't no business shacking anyway. You know, but I said, OK, your boyfriend going upside your head, you know, and he over here not acting crazy. Can you get over here? So I'm like, OK, so I run over there. Now I'm thinking to myself now, you know, <laughs> the best I can do is, you know, fight him in tongues. Perfect will of God. He won't know what I'm saying. But I'm like, OK, all right. So I get on over there. And so. You know, they into it and he get to yelling and screaming. Then next thing I know, he swing. So he swing, she ducks and he hits me. I'm like, I don't believe this. So he hits me and I mean, I end up getting really, really hurt. So next thing I know, I'm in the hospital, you know, and I'm blinking one for yes, two for no. And then I hear that they passing out wedding invitations. I'm like, what? I mean, not only that, you know, so I'm sitting here, I mean, darn near half paralyzed and y'all somewhere bopping down the aisle. So from that day on, I said, oh, no, 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 no. I, I'm I'm not going to be getting involved in anybody domestic situation or anything of that nature. I, I, I just can't do it. You know, and, you know, what's so funny is when I got over there, the, the man was so small, you know, I'm like, you should have been able to take him yourself. I mean, when I tell you his hand was so little, he would have to cut a white castle in for us. I'm like, what is you worried about this man? <laughs> but <laughs> anyways. <laughs> I, I ended up not getting involved, but we're praying for it. And I hope all is well, y'all. But listen, I see we got a couple more people that came in. <laughs> I see you, sis, uh, Renee. She says, I'm late, but you're here. We're glad to see you. Listen, if you guys haven't already, y'all know how we'd like to do it. Make sure you like and share. Take a minute right now and like and share. Make sure you let somebody know that we're on. We have an amazing show for you guys today. And I don't want to take up any more time babbling, but it's time for us to get into one of my favorite parts of any show that I'm a part of. And that is, it's time for some hot topics. Y'all ready for it? Let's do it. Let's get into some hot topics right here. It's time, it's time, it's time for some hot topics. You know, before we get into hot topics, I want to groove a little bit. Hot topics always gets me excited, like this song does. Hey, hey, it's time for hot topics. Hey. This is Clarita Hatton Jackson, y'all. Won't you help me hold on to my gifts? Hey! All right, y'all. So it is time for Hot Topics. Let's get into it. Who do we want to talk about first? Well, I'm so glad that you asked. First in our Hot Topics, let's talk about Mr. Bishop Hezekiah Walker. 
Yes, yes, yes. Bishop Hezekiah Walker is in the news. And what I love about it, he's in the news for something really good. Los Angeles uh, Times says that Bishop Hezekiah Walker became a student at Virginia Union University two years ago, but the Grammy winning gospel singer took his uh, collegiate experience to the next level by opening a gospel music center on the campus. He will lead the Hezekiah Walker Center of Gospel Music at Virginia Union. Uh, University in Richmond, Virginia. It's being dubbed as the first academic center, center focused on gospel music at a historically black college or university where students can learn the cultural and business aspects of the genre and industry. Walker said the center, which opened spring 2022, would provide a tremendous outlet to house or music. I thought it would be a great opportunity to invite people to come to Virginia Union for gospel music and they can learn about our heritage. How dope is that? Come on, give it up to Bishop Hezekiah Walker. I think that is like super, super dope. I think that uh, I love the fact that he's giving back after having his college experience there. So yeah, come on, let's clap it up for him. Clap it up for Bishop Hezekiah Walker. That is super, super exciting. Super, super dope. Uh, I'm so excited to hear that. All right. Also, now, I want to kind of switch gears real quick because now some children, especially the ones in the Nevada area, have already started going back to school. And some parents are very excited about that. Some parents have mixed emotions about that, especially the parents in one uh, Las Vegas, Nevada suburb who are now very afraid due to their students going on the first day of school just yesterday and then finding out that there were four kids there that tested positive for COVID-19. So what I want to know is how do you guys feel about that? Imagine your kid going to school, everybody's excited, taking pictures first day of school, and then four kids test positive for COVID. So my question to you guys who are watching today, I wanna know, uh, would you, are you okay with sending your kids back to school this year? Um, and if so, what, you know, how do you feel about this? Or, you know, just overall, do you want to send your kids back to school? Or are you like, no, no, not my kids, not this year. I'm good. How do you guys feel about that? Please let me know. Oh, so my sister's on, Christina Tachi she says, I am peed. Okay. She said, no, I'm not okay. Okay. So I think that she is, uh, she's in the Las Vegas area. So I believe that uh, my nephew's school had someone that uh, did test positive for COVID as well. So she's saying, no, I'm not okay. Yeah. And I believe that there are a lot of people who are feeling the same way. They are just not okay. Um, Kiana Parker said, my kid wouldn't be going until those kids are cleared. Absolutely. But see, my question to you is, um, oh, She's saying it happened again today. Oh my gosh. So another student must have tested positive for COVID as well. I guess my question is this. So you're saying that you're not okay. Somebody else said that my kid wouldn't be going until it's clear, but would you send your kid in the first place? That's what I want to know. Would you, would you be okay with sending them in the first place? Kevin said, if I had any, I wouldn't be. Wow. Okay. So the, I see Kiana said, I wouldn't be until it's clear. Um, Kevin saying, I would not be okay with it if I had kids. Like, no way, Jose, I would not do it. Let's see. Christina Todd said, they're not giving a virtual option. How crazy is that? See, I that, now that part there is what I don't understand. You know, because I think with everything that's going on with, uh, you know, uh, different uh, variances spiking and things of that nature. And obviously kids are reporting to school that have uh, COVID-19. And so that's causing issues. Why would you not, you know, give a virtual uh, opportunity or why would you, you know, not open it up so that students could uh, go virtually if their parents chose or, you know, their families thought that was the best way. I, I, I guess I just don't understand that part. Um, Meredith Jackson says it's too dangerous. No, absolutely. It's ab I, that's what I feel. I think it's absolutely too dangerous. Kiana says they could at least give a virtual option. Absolutely. I mean, my thing is at least give people the, the give them the opportunity to choose what they want to do, whether they choose to um, say, yes, I want to um, allow my kids to go or not. Kevin Moore says, nope, they need to wake up. Absolutely. Meredith said, that's terrible. 
Uh, Renee Rogers says, my kids are grown, but I have grandchildren who are in school and I'm totally against them returning to the classroom. It's not safe. Listen, guys, I, I feel the same way. And, uh, you know, I'm just praying that uh, these schools come to their senses and just understand that this is not okay. Uh, Jan says, I'm glad I don't have to make that decision for that age. In my head, I say no. Mine are college age and I still get some type of, I still feel some kind of way. Exactly. Kiana Parker says, but that's also part of the parent's responsibility as well. You have to make sure your child doesn't have COVID. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a big part of it. You know, uh, you do have to make sure that your child does not have COVID. And then, you know, I think as a parent, we have to make very, um, difficult decisions as to whether we're going to send our kids to school uh, or not, even if there are no virtual, you know, uh, learning choices. You know, maybe that means we homeschool. Yep, I got you, Jan. Christina says, and parents need to be more responsible. If you got your child tested and pending results, they should stay home. Absolutely. Absolutely. I Listen, I agree 110%. They should definitely stay home. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. All right. Meredith says you have to protect your babies. So true. I think it's up to you to protect your babies and by any means necessary. All right. So, you know, that's my take on that. I, I think I know for my kids, they're not going back, period. All right. They're not going back and uh, it's just not safe for us. Um, but I definitely think those of you guys who have children, uh, school age children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, I think we need to be very vocal about how we feel and about the measures that are being taken so that we can protect our children. Last comment on this, Christina Todd says, or if the parent has it, then they shouldn't be sending their kids to school. Absolutely. If you, the parent has COVID, you do not, I repeat, you should not send your kid to school under any circumstance. I mean, I, and this is not rocket science. I don't understand. Jan Millender says in my, in my uh, county, it's optional. And see, I appreciate that. I think it should be optional. I think that people should be able to choose whether they send their kid back to school or not. Point blank, period. All right. OK, moving on, guys, we got one more hot topic and we're going to get right to it. And this one is about none other than Miss Tamla Mann. That's right. Tamla Mann is in. Uh, I don't want to say the news, but she is a part of our hot topics today because she has a brand new CD. That's right. Do we still call a CD brand new record, brand new? I don't know. After several years of evolution and change in her life, Grammy Award winning NAACP Image Award winning actress, songwriter and producer Tamla Mann is set to release her new album, Overcomer. Actually, she did release it Friday, August 6th uh, via Till Mann Music and Orchard. Propelled by the singer's strong, passionate vocals and her newfound voice as a songwriter, each of the 12 tracks uh, on Overcomer was conceived to bring healing and hope to the world, resetting after a, tr a tumultuous chapter in its history. I'm so excited for Tamla Mann. Let me tell you, I, I love her. I love her spirit. Tamla Mann is just overall good people, um, and I'm excited. I have already uh, got the music, and I hope that you guys have it as well. Kiana, I agree. She says she looks amazing. Amazing, by the way. Yes, she does. Jan Millinder says, I love her new CD. I do as well. I do as well. I think that these songs are absolutely amazing and um, I'm just super excited. Renee Rogers says, I love her and I love her too. I love her too. All right, guys, but those are the hot topics for today. Uh, I just uh, had a few of them today. Of course, if you have anything that you want me to talk about that you feel is a hot topic, make sure you email me, pastorrontod at gmail.com, and I would love to talk about it right here on the show. Jen, I agree. I love her ministry so anointed. I absolutely positively agree with that statement. All right, guys, I'm super excited because up next, the Billboard chart topping uh, uh, award winning international gospel recording artist Ernest Pugh is on the way. But before he comes out, let's take a look at one of his first hits. Let your glory fill this place. Let your all consuming fire. Fill this tabernacle and purify our hearts. Surround us in this place 
Want you to breathe new life within us Send a refreshing love Purify our hearts Let your glory fill Let your glory fill this place Let your all consuming fire guys without further ado put your hands together for billboard chart topping international gospel recording artist mr ernest pew hey 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 <laughs> yes yes <laughs> what's up what's man you on? took us back you took us back a little bit there real 
you know, I had to play one of my favorites. That's one of my favorite songs there. And, you know, wow. it's so funny because Kiana said, it's the range for me sings. I, I said the same thing, <laughs> Kiana. It's the range for me. It, man. I appreciate you. Oh, I appreciate <clears throat> you. Thanks for being here. Yes, sir. It's an honor. Well, you know, I tell you, ever since I put out the uh, the promo that you were going to be here, people have been sending messages like, oh, my gosh, they have so many things they want to know and so many questions. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, how long do you think I'm going to be able to keep them? <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, um, you know, the first thing that so many people are asking is, can you please ask him about his start? You know, everybody wants to know because we, we see you now and, you know, you I tell you, you the billboard loves you. The people love you because you, you stay at number one. <laughs> oh, well, keep on praying for us. Just pray for us. <laughs> For weeks and weeks. But, you know, a lot of times people see our glory, but they don't know our story. And exactly. so many people are wondering, where did you get your start uh, in, in music ministry? Well, I've always, um, you know, Pastor Todd, been a, a, a church kid. So I was all, always around music. I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, my mentor there was Orlando Draper, as with yeah. Orlando Draper and Associates. And so from the age of maybe about four or five, I've been in church, but he kind of noticed me around the age 12, started coming to our city on the outskirts of Memphis doing workshops. And man, he just kept prophesying saying, well, where are you going? You're going to need this. And where are you going? I was like, where am I going? Because in my mind, I always wanted to either be a policeman or join the military. So at 18, I left and joined the military, but it's like, God always, it's like you can get away, you can get by, but you can't get away. So right. every, even in that, that time in the military, people always would be like, you talk like you can sing. Can you sing? Can you do it? And so it just turned into, I really, most of my career, my job was singing. I was doing funerals. I was doing weddings. I sang the national anthem. I did all those things. But what I want people to know is when I finally got chance, got ready to try to shift into the gospel music industry, I was turned down by eight labels. Wow. Eight labels. Every one of them, I sent my demo tape because you know how the church, they prophesy and you're like, OK, I'm going to run with this prophecy and I'm going to invest my money and go. And right. all of them told me they were like, well, I think you're a great talent, but you don't have really national appeal. You don't have what's now. You definitely ministry, but you're not industry. So just stay wow. at your local church. And that's what I did. And, and while I was staying at my local church, God still sent. <clears throat> Kerry Douglas to come to a concert I was doing. Kelly Price was at a uh, concert and I was ad living with Kelly Price on Nobody But Jesus and her voice was out. So they said, well, you got to run. Just do the whole vamp. I was like, I'm not going to stand on stage with Kelly Price and do the whole. They said, well, her voice is gone. So just have a good time, but you know, but basically kill it. And so the rest is history. Kerry Douglas said, do you have a, a tape? I said, I have an album I've recorded called Rain On Us. And I don't have the money to market, promote it, or do anything with it at radio. And he said to me, if you give me this single, uh, if I don't take the song to the top, you don't have to sign the contract. If I do, uh, once we get a number one, we're going to go into the office and we're going to sign the contract. And that's how it all started. From there, it was just like, but it was, it was, pro it was progressive. It was nothing immediate. Uh, it took a long time to really get it done. And so here I am, year 22. Wow. Yeah. And, yeah, I agree with you, Jan. She said, look at God. But, you know, there, there's a part of the story, Dr. Pugh, that I really appreciate about uh, what you said, which is that even though you were turned down, that's the mm -hmm. first thing that stood out to me is because I think a lot of times we get afraid of no's. Yeah. And I think what you said helped me to realize, and I hope this helps somebody out there who is aspiring to do whatever God has called you to do that, you know, sometimes knows uh, is setting you up for the right yes. There you go. That's good. And go. not only that, you talked about the knows, but then you talked about even though, you know, prophecy had went forth and you believed God, you weren't seeing it right away, but right. you were faithful to your local yeah. assembly. Can you talk Absolutely. about why it's so important for artists to be faithful to a local assembly? Well, I think, you know, when you um, embrace the vision of a church and you go in there and you serve and you also submit to the leadership, I believe because of their oversight, God gives them insight mm -hmm. to point you to a more excellent way. Uh, and the reason is because they can see farther than you. 
Mm-hmm. And so one of the first things my mentor told me is he said, you have a tangible anointing. God is going to use you, but you got to really submit yourself to where you can, you know, I'm going to teach you, train you, then I'm going to trust you. It was called teach, train and trust. And so at 1920, you know, I was ordained, but I was an armor bearer. He was like, I'm, I'm going to see how well you can serve. And then after I served, it's almost like, a, you know, that being down in the vineyard of Timnath where you get tested. And it's yeah. like, don't touch. It tells you what the rules or stipulations. And we're always going to be boxed in by the stipulations of the almighty, which means you, you're not your own. You can't just do what you want to do. Just because they call you does not mean you just go. When you submit it to authority, the person who watches for your soul prays over you. Um, you got to just safely trust that they're going to be honest with you about what they see. And everybody needs that type of person. I think uh, and not only being submitted with your body and your soul, but I was a tither. Come I'm on. Talking, I was a tithe at 20 something years old. My offering was probably double what my tithe was. And so what God did with that is I think it really showed that I could be trusted. You know, if you can be trusted with little, God said, I'll give you much. Ooh. And so I was an armor bearer. I was a choir member. I led praise and worship and I paid my tithe because my, my grandma and them always said, you're going to be cursed with a curse. I, I didn't Come know. On. And I, we used to blessing, blessing, blessing. But in my house, it was all about the curse. How do you avoid the curse? Give God, you know, give God what's right. Don't be and a so God think, robber. Yeah, don't rob God. And so I think when God can trust you with those and um, being under leadership, who can really point that. But it's important for you to pray for the right leader because Ooh. you really have to be sensitive to who it is that your heart, you know, God, God will show you when he gives you a piece for you to be a part of that church. Join it with wholeheartedly. And I'm telling you, if you take care of God's business there, he will take care of yours. That's powerful because I think uh, the problem is when you don't really um, ask God to lead you uh, to a place where you really believe that that leader is interceding for your purpose, then what happens is when they give you a directive or when they tell you no, I never forget hearing Hezekiah Walker talking about being asked to perform on the Stellars and his pastor or his leader at the time saying, no, I need you. We got something going on here. Wow. And see you're more apt to adjust and to acquiesce to your leader when you know that they really uh they they really are praying for you and god is really speaking to them concerning your your walk and so i think that's a powerful piece that you brought up there so now let's let's go down through the years because now rain on us became this huge hit now tell it tell us what was going through your mind as that song was just getting the radio and you you saw the buzz begin uh, to happen did you think at that time this was prophecy being fulfilled or did you still have that overwhelming like i can't believe this feeling well, I, I, I knew what God had spoken to me. Uh, they actually wanted the great I am to be the lead out single on the record. But if you'll remember in 2008, the country was going through an economic downturn. Yes. And and I was already kind of uh, seeing my choir members. I was employed at a church called Ebenezer AME Church. Byron Cage was my boss. And our choir members were losing jobs and homes. I mean, it was a heavy, heavy, heavy time. And I, as I was beginning to just feel for God, because I always really, I try to really like hear the voice of God, keep my ear to the ground and see what he's saying. And he just kept saying to me, you got to sing something that deals with this famine. You got to deal with the rain coming. They're in a dry place. And I want you to tell the people, now you got to find the song, Tell the people that I'm going to saturate every dry area in their life. The drought is over. We were in the middle, if you would, of that economic downturn. And so I had to come with something that was going to appear. But my team was like, oh, no, we need an upbeat song. They need to see you party. And I said, I'm telling y'all, the voice of God just keeps telling me go with a slow song. You never go with a slow song with a ballad when you're a new artist. That's right. You know, you get if you got something quick and fast, it fits in the format better. But God just kept saying, tell them I'm going to rain on. So I was going through my repertoire and Shade Simpson, the girl who originally recorded that, came to our church, to the women's conference and the song annihilated the place. And so I said to her, I said, I don't know who wrote it. I don't care who wrote it. I need that song because I can't record all the other eight or nine songs if I don't have a song that talks about speaking to our current reality. And so 
when it went number one, I really was not, ex I was not, my goal was not to be number one. My goal was to have a song that would weave its way through all of their other playlists and say, this song really resonates and speaks to the heart uh, of the people. And that's what I was after. So I, when he called me, I was on the beach. They called and said, yo, man, you, you know, you got the number one song in the country. And I said, who, what? Because I, I, I never watched charts. I just... I just, I, and I'm not into luck either, but I just never wanted to stress myself out. So right. I had to get a call from my team to tell me the record was number one. And so it stayed number one for like four months. And so I would go places and they were like, I'm so tired of hearing you on the radio. Somebody's really doing their job. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. And I tell you what, Kiana Parker says something that is so true. She said, I mean, everyone praise dance to rain on us, including <laughs> me. Right, <laughs> Kiana, you. you are so right. I, I, I don't think I, I've been to still. so many churches and they're still praise dancing the rain on us. I went to a church Sunday and I had my whole set. I was like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. I got new music. They were like, That's fine, but you're not getting off the same. Matter of fact, you're not gonna get your final payment if you don't do Ryan on us, <laughs> right? And you so, went right into it, didn't you? I <laughs> went right on into it. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. Yeah, I have no problem. Well, now tell us, let's kind of move forward to today. Um, you have an amazing project once again. Here we go. And, um, you know, one song that is really, I mean, I hear it all day, every day here, which is thank you so much. Oh, wow. Oh, my. Oh, yeah, I'm hearing it. And uh, it's, it's one of my favorites anyway. Um, I but, that. oh, absolutely. Tell us about uh, this new record and putting it together. And, and how you came up with the songs and things of that nature. Well, the Outpour experience um, it was recorded actually right uh, in 2019. But as you know, 2020, we had the uh, pandemic and we couldn't go out and tour it. So we released a song on there, which we thought was speaking really, was God Wants to Heal You. That song was recorded 11 years ago. Wow. But when E1 Entertainment said, I love all these songs that you have out but this God wants to heal you is what we want to go with. What made him go with it is Kiana, um, when Kobe Bryant and his beautiful daughter were, um, you know, perished in that helicopter, we put it out just to encourage him. And we got 30,000 views in one night. Wow. And so he, he one called and said, are you paying attention to what's going on on social media? I'm like, I'm not looking at what's trending. They said, this song has 30,000 views. I think we need to put it out. Well, right after that, we got notification that the pandemic had break, uh, the COVID was here. So the song was just really something we was doing to be to get the people's attention for the outpour experience. Thank you so much was always going to be the first song, but once again, we wound up starting with a ballad. God wants to heal you. It went number one. Thank you so much, though. When I finally, because I was going to go with another one after that, I felt a shift. But guess what happened to me? I wound up getting COVID. And I was like admitted to the hospital with an oxygen level of about 82. And I stayed on the ventilator for like 10 days. Wow. And every day they came in my room, it was just negative. They was telling my daughter, his oxygen level is not coming up. I think we're going to have to just, you know, put him in a um, and put him in a coma, put him on a respirator, let his body just heal. And she was like, no, my dad needs his vocal cords. We can't. So she said, give us a few hours. We're going to get to church to pray. Long story short, 72 hours later, my oxygen level was up to 92. I was getting ready to be released to go home. But let me tell you, the thing that God just really spoke into my mind was just, thank you, normalizing the word Ooh. thank you. Because yes, I don't think we say thank you enough. That could have gone a whole nother way. The guy who was in the room with me passed away the day that I came off the ventilator. Mm. Mm -hmm. He was 10 years younger than me, physically fit. He was a coach, matter of fact. And God just, I said, you know, I, I said, Lord, thank you. This could have gone a whole nother way. So when Carrie came and said, well, what song do you want to go? I say, thank you so much. I want to normalize saying thank you because sometimes we can just come, become familiar with God's healing power and the blessings and just almost feel entitled like we deserve it. But it, we don't deserve all that we're getting. So I think when you have an attitude of gratitude, even my mama used to say, when, when somebody does something for you, say thank you. It opens say the door for, for many more things. And so thank you so much. Really, it's just my attitude of gratitude for God's spare in my life because the doctor still called me like once a month. Is he still here? You know, that was a scary thing. One or two times my oxygen wow. level dipped down into the 60s. And they mm -hmm. were like, I don't know who's praying for this guy. Because I, I beat all the, all the people who have, this is what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to move on to the next thing. There were six people 
in that same bed, in that same room. All of them passed. I was number seven. Ooh. I was not, that bed that I was in, bed number three, seven people. That's what he said. I want, and he said, everybody who has got in this bed, all six people before you passed away. Same thing, oxygen level dropping. And so God had purpose and destiny for me in the earth. And so I'm just thankful for life, but I'm just thankful that I can tell other people to listen. When you stand on the warranty and the authority of God's word, I don't care what, uh, what odds are stacked against you. You have to just understand that, listen, God has the final say and that God is in control. So that yeah. doctor was not a born again believer, but he is now. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> you got me stirred up over here now. You, know, as you a matter were fussing of fact, at me too. You was fussing <laughs> at me about getting sick. I sure was. And as a matter of fact, I didn't know until you were much better. Like, I think maybe it was like a week or two. Because I'm like, where you been? I've been calling. I've been texting. <laughs> I've been crying out to God with sign language because I couldn't talk. <laughs> <laughs> I had I no like, idea. But I tell you what, thank you so much, Lord Jesus. He did, and man. He did it. Let's take a look at this, uh, this video. Thank you so much. a few witnesses that can thank God sometimes for what did not happen. <laughs> Y'all feel me on it? Listen, and once he brings you through it, you can say like I say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good.
Look at here. Hey. Oh, oh, you were singing that thing. You hear me? If it had not been. <laughs> That's it. I love it. Tell everybody where they can get the new record. Everywhere, right? Yeah, all the digital outlets, uh, digital platforms, stream it, download it, tell a neighbor, tell a friend. Well, you know, I, I, most of them already got it, but, you know, uh, if they just so happen to not, or, you know, maybe yeah. they need to tell somebody just else. To make in sure they get it. Just, just in case. Just in case. <laughs> uh, make sure you grab it. I know it's going to be a blessing to you. Now, you know, another question that people wanted me to ask you is what do you, what do you think your... Um, has allowed you to have longevity in the industry what what do you think uh it is that's allowed you to have the longevity i think uh being true to to what i'm supposed to to do like mm -hmm. to not move with trends um instead of moving with the crowd move with the cloud i love if it. you really are, are following what god has told you don't change your style just because something new comes around and i think a lot of times people get caught up in a lot of what's going on marketing promotions and all that they can suggest those things to you but your fan base knows exactly what they want to hear from you they and you kind of know it too you know they're looking for a certain flow um they're looking for you to be uh, really like church music works on church people. So if right. you know you're a Sunday morning type oil gift, don't try to do a contemporary song. Right. Know? And I think that's what every every producer that I've worked with, I tell them, I said, I really want to stay true to what my flow is. I can't, there's already a Kirk Franklin. They already have a John to make Reynolds. There's already right. a Kim Burrell. But I think when you're very true to what God has put to you and stay in your own lane and be comfortable there and be powerful there and you'll yeah. be impactful there. You know, and one thing, too, I think that I would say, you know, just from those who I run into, everybody talks about how consistently nice you are. Oh, and, wow. oh yeah. I, I think it's important. To, it's nice to be nice, as they say. And yeah. I think that takes you a long way in the industry. You know, when you're wonderful and nasty, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know right. I think you, you, you tend to have a short uh a short uh, uh, span in this industry nowadays, you know, uh, yeah. there are even some that are you, still wonderful, but you know, even with their incredible voices, they're learning yeah. that they are. <laughs> but you know what that talent, and this is what I learned in a workshop, believe it or not, listening to P Diddy, uh, the singing, the talent, the skill, it's only 20%. The other 80% is your business acumen, your ability to communicate, be nice personality, personable skills, mm -hmm. all of those things will take you much further. Like, like, like right now, I just opened up a tour and I know probably, I know, I know a lot of ministers and music and pastors around the country. So if they're not calling me, I can pick up the phone and just say, I'm going to be in a region. I'd like to do boom, 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 boom. And so cultivating those relationships will get you more, um, you'll make more impact, more global impact, and you will work more. You will be in more spots. If you just keep keep that attitude that I have to have other people, we're stronger together. I have to have other yes. people. It's not just me, and I don't care what those charts say, because that's a lot of people who are on those charts and are taking home those stellars that are at home watching Judge Judy every weekend. That's right. So you have to get up on that phone, and you have to, you know, that thing called friend, you have to really normalize being and reciprocating, like just yeah. as it's given to you, give it back. And I'm telling you, you will work, you will work, your stuff will go. Radio, I can just tell the promoters, the radio people, I'm putting something out. They're texting me, send me the MP3. But yes. that's 20 something years of not just calling them when I want something, but I call them when they get married anniversary. I call them when somebody passes away in their family when their child gets baptized. You know, yeah. it's like the real authenticity of loving people, I think will get you a long way. You know, I'm glad you said that because I think it's, it's because of relationships and because of you being so nice that we got um, this. Yeah. I yes, said, <laughs> that safety ain't no joke. Do Let you understand? You did your good old singing on there. I said, I don't oh, know why, what he wants me to do. You, you've already just slayed your 10,000. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I tell you that these these uh, radio directors, when I send them the song, they say, oh, Ernest is on there. Play that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that. No, they listen to you. I said, oh, no. my God, this boy can sing. No, I, no, I followed no. you for years, though. Yeah. You're consistent. You know, 
and but the thing is, is that I, I really feel like it was because of that relationship. I was able to call you, and it wasn't. Yeah. You said yes, and boom, there it was. Yeah, but you you're know. always great. You're very consistent, which is what I love about you. All through, you know, you meet a lot of people out here, but you remember how people make you feel. You make Absolutely. everybody feel like they matter. Oh wow, I appreciate yeah. you saying that. I really do. <laughs> but now, listen, if you guys haven't gotten this one, hey. <laughs> Cause see, Where's the I, video the, at? The, it's coming. It's coming, <laughs> and, and that's an insider, y'all. <laughs> but <laughs> the video is coming. Then maybe more, y'all will go get it. Cause see, you know, when y'all saw that, thank you so much, video. Y'all said I gotta run and get that record, so I, I, I'm getting it. All right, I'm getting it. We gonna get that that video. But you know, I, before I let you go, we gotta talk. You have an amazing book as well. Tell us about your yes. book. Yes. Well, this book, Abiding in the Place of Worship, um, man, I'm, I was really dealing with the whole COVID thing. And God spoke to me about Revelation chapter 11. If you remember that scripture, J uh, John the Revelator says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. But yes. if you look at that pericope, he never left the Isle of Patmos. So even though you can be, you got to be a people who know, know how to be in two places at one time, your body right. can be afflicted. You can be going through all types of other turmoil in the natural. But when you allow your spirit to ascend on high, God can still move in the midst of your situation. I'm telling you that a proverb said the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. So when you're going through whatever you're going through, if you allow your spirit to be energized and edified and encouraged and built up, you can oh, you can overcome anything that you're going through. So we wrote this book, man. We're talking about things like the marriage between the pulpit and the music pit. Yeah. It's some deep stuff in here, man. We're talking about when you are unceremonially released from assignments, what's next? Sometimes God's rejection is actually his protection. My and he God. has something greater and bigger for you. So we go through a lot of practical stuff with how to lead worship. But really, anybody who wants to be closer to God as you draw not, not to him, he'll draw not to you. So you can go to ErnestPewOnline.com and get the book. It also has an accompaniment, uh, a companion CD to where I sing after every chapter or I do a prayer after every chapter. And uh, I mean, it's getting great reviews. Uh, we have been doing a lot of book signings, but we've been on Zoom doing classes. I had 450 people in my last Zoom class teaching on worship. Wow. And so uh, I'm just super excited about what God, this may be one of the things that I add on. Maybe I come in one day and teach on worship and do my concert the next day. I don't know. Absolutely. Well, I'm so excited. I got the website up here for you guys. Please go ErnestPewOnline.com yeah. and make sure you purchase this book. And if they're there, can they get music there as well? They can get all my music. Well, you can get all my music uh, on ErnestPew.com. Just type okay. in ErnestPew.com. Every music, every video, uh, everything. I, as I would say, every record. Every record. Every record. I love it. Well, make sure you get that. But I want you to grab the book. I, this is a great read. I think everybody, it's for everybody, too. I think sometimes people feel like, well, I'm not an artist, you know, or oh. I'm not a preacher. This is for everybody. La -di 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 everybody. everybody. Matter of fact, I, I talk on one chapter how to differentiate between industry and ministry. You know, industry may be marketing, promotions, distribution and all that. But ministry is totally different. Embracing the vision of that house, talking about salvation, rededication, getting filled with the Holy Ghost and all of that. And then coming into uh, embracing that vision of the house, how to get that atmosphere charged. So we talk about all of that stuff through the book. I think that's chapter nine. It's a lot of practical stuff. Uh, but I'm telling you, it's some good nuggets that have helped a lot of uh, the younger worship leaders and just members of the team, whether you're a liturgical dancer, musician, drama ministry, it's ap applicable um, to you. Please get it. ErnestPewOnline.com. Oh, it's so funny. Uh, Emmanuel Johnson, he actually produced safety. He said, let's go. Come on. Oh, <laughs> what's up, man? Emmanuel, you did a good job on that. He I'm did, just, didn't he? He killed that. I mean, that vocal going in the studio, I was like, this is so churchy. This is so Detroit. So I Detroit. said, this is so Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> That's us. Now, listen, last question before we go, and this just dropped yeah. in my spirit. This was this is off the cuff. But what is your advice for uh, new artists, uh, especially as we're we're in a totally different uh, movement, if you will, as far as the church? You know, there's certain aspects that I don't know if, if they will ever go back. 
uh, to the way they were uh, prior to the pandemic. But a lot of people are asking how to market themselves. You know, uh, is it okay to take virtual assignments? You know, what does that look like? Um, what can you share with, and you know, even some of the, the the more mature artists who are just feeling challenged because they don't know how to maneuver, you know, uh, as the pandemic is, is coming to an end? Well, what I'll say to them is to, number one, invest in your craft. And when I say invest, um, really get you some really good photos that represent you well, uh, get you some good lighting and start letting people get an idea Come what on. the ministry is about. Get you some good lighting. Listen, this, this, I, if all you can start with in terms of a, a device to record yourself, the Apple phone's doing an impeccable job. So you got to capture yourself and give people just a screenshot. Uh, just a snapshot of what they're going to be bringing to their church, to their conference, to their concerts. Uh, and, and you want to be displayed in the best way possible. That's why I emphasize lighting. Get you, if you, get you a good old photographer, some good polished images. Get you yeah. some nice clothes. You don't have to spend a whole, whole, lot, whole lot of money, but make yourself look presentable. And get but now, wait style. a minute, Doctor Pew, because see, when they look at you and see all those custom pieces and the oh, you'd be surprised, and, and those jackets and this that, they might feel like they have to, you know, have that. You'll be so surprised. You know what the majority of my clothes come from? You're not gonna believe it. I know you're not. But let me tell you who I am. Now I will do labels when I have to do a green, a red screen, a green screen, blue, uh, a red carpet, and all of that. I will do labels, and I like them every once in a while. But let mm -hmm. me tell you where my main ministry is at. Where? You get your good old Macy's, a good Marshalls, or get Come your on. good raw stretch for that. That's where I hang out. My my retail therapy all during COVID. I would go in those stores, and you'd be surprised. A lot of that stuff comes from the Neiman markets and different places and goes over there. And I just really? do it because you have to have so many clothes. All of your clothes are not, you're not going to spend $5,000 on the jacket every time. So well, because nine times out of 10, you're not going to wear it again. You're going to wear it one or two times. Me, I don't, I really can't wear anything you want on the red carpet. You'll never see me wear it in public. So that money is just gone. So yeah. you got to be wise with your, with your resources, you know, go into these department stores, go Macy's, they do very well with the stuff that we can look very presentable. Oh, yeah. They have and great so, jackets with the nice yes, floral print. I love Macy's jackets. All jacket. of that. So be yes. wise. Look around, but look the part, sound the part. Make sure your sound is good. Get you some really good, get you a good microphone and capture. Show the people what you're offering them. And then you put on there how to book you, how to contact you. That's what you got to do. But you got to invest in your craft. And you really got to be cutting edge with it because it's a lot that's on this internet. If you look at them Sunday mornings, they jump the, from page to page to page to page. You don't Whoever's give an offer on no none stuff. of them. Don't give nothing. <laughs> so the look, whoever's got the best stage lighting, the best sound, the best quality, all the hype, that's what they go for. So, hey, the, the level ground is, the playing ground is level. So this is your opportunity. It's been kingdom expansion for me and a lot of my other artist friends. There are some places we never would have gotten into had we not uh, been locked down. So rise above it. Absolutely. I remember when, uh, you know, we couldn't go anywhere. I put my little flyer up, except yeah. in virtual engagements. And let me tell you, I had my little ring light and I sat here in front of my <laughs> laptop and baby, I say no. <laughs> Saying, preach, teach. I was doing you Zoom right where I'm sitting now, and they would just come to you. And I'm telling that was God's way. I'm telling you, do you remember? And I know we got to go. Do you remember when we transitioned from the cassette tape to the CD? Oh, yeah. And it, that was hard for people as well. And then oh, they got into the digital downloads. Well, now this is not just a, 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 a this is not just a pivot, this is a shift. Completely. Now yeah. we've got to go online, we got to learn how to do lighting, people have to give virtually. And this is new for us because as a church, we've been accustomed to in person. Absolutely. Not anymore. Now you got to do in person and you've got to learn how to. And see, my, my vision is to reach the world. When mm -hmm. I tell you for New Year's Eve, I was in seven places. Now, even with a private jet past the time, I would not have been able to have been in seven places. Right. I was in seven places on New Year's Eve because of what? The shift to virtual. Yes. And I tell you, I mean, it's so much like you were saying earlier, there's so much you can do. You can have a, a good iPhone camera, like you said, uh, and a, a green Two camera perspective. Come yeah. on. It looks good. And I'm telling you, if you got that look, 
it's going to, you're going to attract people who really will sow into you, will really, really, really bless you. But not that that's the goal, but what I'm saying is people want to be associated with quality. And when you have so many other people that you're competing with, you're yeah. only going to capture their attention if they can see you properly, see how you're, you're well illuminated and all that. They're going to say, okay, he has invested and put time in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, and I, I would say I think social media is so important. You know, um, yeah. everybody's on it. You know, everybody's scrolling through, and you'd be surprised who sees what. And I think some people get so full of themselves because you know people know them in their little vicinity. You know, in their hometown, you know, they may be the hometown star. You know, Nipsey yeah. Tootsie Roll champ in their <laughs> area. <laughs> in their area but they forget <laughs> it's a whole world out here and nobody knows you nobody let, let, knows you know you, it, <laughs> at all so it's like social media gives you the opportunity to be seen and heard by people engage and engage get on clubhouse you know interact yeah. with people that you never would be able to interact yeah. with Otherwise. And just get on there and be authentic too. You know what? I looked at a young uh, preacher who kept, oh, I'm so nervous. I'm, but you know what? He was so authentic with his delivery and he was just humble. He was the crazy part is he's got a huge church, but he had never really had to humble himself, sit down and say to the people, I need you to follow. I need you to share. I need you to like. And as they began to do that, it, it was so touching to me because I'm like, this humbled him. You, yeah. you, the mega church is everybody's a mega church now because the world is our stage. And yeah. I watched him do that. And now I'm watching his numbers go. When he started out, it may have been a couple hundred. It's 1,700 people on there watching him. Wow. And because I think he gets on there and he's authentic. He's not pretentious. He's not trying to impress anybody. And I think people can sense and see when you really are authentic and when you're not. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, listen, thank you so much for being here today. I know I got to let you go. I probably kept you longer than I was supposed to. All good. <laughs> Make sure you guys go to earnestpew.com and earnestpewonline.com and just get everything. Everything you see, just get, get it all. all. It's all good. I'm and more, not only I'm that, know you. I think they need to know that you're also, you are an ordained uh, elder, a pastor Absolutely. in the church. So Absolutely. listen, if he can come preach, he can come sing. Every, every, <laughs> everything's a la carte. No, I can do a little comedy, whatever you want. I got <laughs> you. Got you. He got you. So just, you know, how can for booking, who do they call for booking? Booking, uh, you go to www.earnestpew.com and there's a tab on there where you click on booking. And uh, we'd love to come be with you. Absolutely. Well, thank you again. I, it means thank the world you, to me that you took the time. And ever since uh, safety, people have been asking that they, they want to see us together. And so we got to do it, man. Do I gonna, need to just come to Detroit? Come on. No, we <laughs> come on. Come no, on. We're going to come no. do it live over there at your spot. Yes, we're we going to do that, but we're going to do the video. We're going to do it right. We coming. All right. We All coming. Right. I'm ready for it. Well, I love you, man. Thank you I so love much you for more. including me. Absolutely. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again. Bless you. Yes, sir. Right now. All right, y'all. That was the legendary Ernest Pugh. Uh, what a phenomenal interview. I really think that he said some things that really, uh, I don't know, they blessed me for sure. And I think, uh, I hope they were a blessing to you as well. Make sure you go to his website, Ernest Pugh. Dot, uh, EarnestPew.com and EarnestPewOnline.com and make sure you get uh, and you support all of his paraphernalia. Um, truly, uh, I believe that it will be a blessing to you. Well, people, it is time for one of my favorite segments on every show that I'm a part of. And what is that? It's time for Ask Ron. Hey. All right, so it's time for Ask Ron. So um, don't forget, if you ever have any questions that you want to ask, make sure that you email them to me at pastorontai at gmail.com. Y'all got it? Pastorontai at gmail.com. And I would love, I would love to um, 
to play them and answer them on the air because um, that's what we do we we helpers one to another all right so i would love to make that happen for you all right so let's see let's get our first question queued up here today all right and here we go North Carolina. my question is what's your thoughts on the cancel culture and music. This is Wait, he said, what's my thoughts on what again? Let's see. Hello, my name is Ron McHoney. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. My question is, what's your thoughts on the cancel culture and music? Can anybody understand what he's saying? The what culture? If you understood that, let me know. But uh, we're going to go to the next question. This is Tiffany from Dallas, Texas. And so my question is, what do you do when you have some members of your ministry fight against the vision of the pastor? Um, they don't agree with anything that the pastor uh, kind of sets forth, yet they... Uh oh Sorry, guys. Let's listen to that again. This is Tiffany from Dallas, Texas. And so my question is, what do you do when you have some members of your ministry fight against the vision of the pastor? Um, they don't agree with anything that the pastor uh, kind of sets forth, yet they won't leave the ministry and find maybe a ministry that they do uh, agree with the vision or can get on board with. What do you do uh, in that regard with those members? You know, that's... that. That's a tough question because I, I think that there are cases where uh, members can be wolves. Um, and what I mean by that is that they become um, almost toxic to the betterment of the whole um, to, to where you uh, there are situations where, I, you know, even I as a pastor has have has had to disfellowship someone because they are constantly um, kicking against the pricks. They're constantly causing trouble uh, with the ministry, not in the sense of them just needing um, uh, support or them not being where they, they're supposed to be, but literally going against the vision and the mission of the church to the point where um, they are are making it hard for ministry to go forth. And so I think there's a, a very fine line when it comes to that person versus someone who um, maybe they, you know, they don't know why they're there, but God has them there for a reason. And maybe they just haven't figured it out yet. And so you don't want to just let go of that person either, you know, or just throw them to the wolves. Um, but I think the best thing to do is to, you know, for whoever the leader is, is to sit down with them and make sure they understand the mission and the vision of the ministry. Um, and then, you know, maybe ask them a question based on, you know, going over the mission, the vision, the bylaws of the ministry. Is this where you want to be? Or maybe you do need to make a change. And if that's the case, um, you know, let them go. But if not, maybe it's, it's you know, um, the Bible says in all that getting, get an understanding. Maybe they just need an understanding of, you know, what they're doing or not doing or uh, what they can do to be better so that it wouldn't, it won't be so much friction. Or again, just get understanding, get clarification on certain things. Sometimes people don't even know that why they're being the way they are or that they're being unruly or anything of that nature. So that's a loaded question, but I hope that that kind of helped uh, answer a little bit. Now, uh, Jan, you said cancel culture. I am not familiar with that. Can somebody tell me what the cancel culture is? If you know, um, and Jen also says they have to line up with the vision so the mission can go forth. Absolutely. Yes, they do. All right. So I'm sorry. I'm not familiar with uh, the cancel culture. But if somebody else, if you are familiar with what that is, can you let me know? And uh, then we can try to answer that question. I feel bad, um, uh, sir. I'm just not familiar with it. Um, and so I want to make sure that whatever I say is accurate. Okay, last question. Here we go. Hey, 
Hey, my sweet babies, it's me, Tracy, and I was just coming because I was on a plane and somebody was coughing next to me and I told them they needed to move me and they said they didn't have nothing but first class and that I would have to pack. So I got off the plane because I'm like, uh-uh, I was real late to my destination, but I want to know, was I wrong? Because, honey, I'm not trying to get sick. Okay. Hello, Tracy. Um, glad to know that you've made it over to the Ron Todd podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but I... No, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, if you were on a plane, I've been on a plane and somebody's been coughing and I've asked them to move my seat as well. Now, I understand they're saying if you want, if you were to move to first class that you would have to pay for that. However, um, I don't think in this case or, or it sounds like in this case, that's not what you were asking for. You just didn't want to be around somebody that was coughing or anything of that nature. Unfortunately for you, I think what happened is it caused you to now miss your destination because you weren't willing to sit by that person but i'm just glad that you got where you needed to go safe and sound and that they didn't make you pay to get on another flight so that's my opinion all right let's go back to this other uh, question <laughs> because emmanuel said that i'm so out of touch yes i am apparently um cancel culture is literally being canceled by fans and peers for bad decisions like racism abuse etc cancel culture so is it, it's it's a movement. Um, I'm I'm still confused as to what it is, because he said, "What do you think about cancel culture? It's literally being canceled by fans and peers for bad decisions, like racism and abuse." So cancel cancel culture is a form of ostracism where people are canceled or thrown out of a social or professional circle. Ah, and they're thrown out because of, for bad decisions like racism and abuse. Well, I mean, hey, what do I feel about it? Well, you know, if they're being racist or, you know, being abusive, then I guess they should be thrown out. I need to, I need to look up this cancel culture and be ready to talk about it more next week um, so I can sound a little more educated. But, you know, that's my immediate um, my immediate uh, response to that. Uh, but again, if you have any questions or anything that you would like to ask, you know, I love to answer them uh, to the best of my ability. In this case, I'm sorry because I did not um, know much about it. Um, uh, Keisha Chapman said, OK, Oh, okay, because I didn't know either. Okay, I'm glad because I didn't want to be the only one. I, okay, Kevin, you Googled it. Thank you. See, I'm Emmanuel, I'm not the only one out of touch. You see that? So I'm glad about that. Um, but all right, y'all. So um, again, if you have a question that you want me to ask on the air and answer, and of course, my wonderful uh, co host, the audience will also help me answer the question. Make sure you email me, Pastor Ron Todd at gmail.com. It's time for us to get out of here. <laughs> it's time for us to get out of here. Thank y'all so much for being here with me. Make sure you spread the word. The Ron Todd uh, podcast will be on every Tuesday, 9 p.m. until October before the Pew comes back. I know y'all miss the Pew crew. I miss them as well, but they will be back in October. But until then, I'm going to be holding it down. Thank you so much for being here. Until next time, I love you for free, and I'll talk to you next week right here on the Ron Todd podcast. Let's dance our way out of here. Y'all ready? Let's go. My savior, my father, every day I try to hold on. Your name, strong power, every day I try to hold on.